Hey, so in one of my community posts from earlier this week, I wrote about uh, how, you know, if you're a baby Christian, it's really, really important that you uh, you read a lot of the Bible even before you start listening to preaching and, you know, visiting church buildings and going to Bible studies. And, uh, you know, things like that. Um, you know, before you even try reading Bible commentaries and, and books about the Bible, it's really important that you actually read the Bible. Okay. And uh, another thing I want to mention is, uh, you know, kind of in regards to that subject as well, is even the person uh, that won you to Christ, okay, even if you, you know, you know them from outside of the internet and, you know, they live in your town and whatnot. Um, you know, it, it's not necessarily safe to assume that just because they know the gospel that they know much else. Okay. And... Also, um, they may have won you to Christ, but they, they could also be just Galatianized, okay? They might have no idea what the just shall live by faith means, okay? <laughs> yeah, sure, they could preach you the gospel, but, uh, you know, they may immediately afterwards you know, try to put you under the law after you get saved. And it happens, okay? I've seen people do it where they, I've seen people win somebody to Christ and then immediately after say crazy stuff to them like, well, well now do you want God's blessing on your life? You know, and, and, and then they'll just start telling them to do all these works. Or God's going to be mad at them. And like, <laughs> it's like, um, you don't want to be listening to somebody like that. Okay. And, you know, if you don't read the Bible, you might not even know, you know, the, the Galatian error. Like, what were the, how were the Galatians bewitched? What was it about? Right. Uh, and, um and and also you know like a, a lot of people have affection to, to towards the person that won them to Christ but don't confuse that affection with you know thinking that that person is like a bible genius okay and look in some cases they may be able to teach you more things but just don't automatically assume th that, you know, that they know stuff. I mean, they could also, you know, know the gospel, but just be a, a crazy conspiracy theorist that just wants to teach you conspiracy theories right after. And, you know, the, they might think that, you know, after you're saved, that you have to please God through all your works and that you're, you might go through the tribulation or something, you know, like that. Then you're just going to have to, you know, unlearn a bunch of that garbage, <laughs> you know, if you start hanging out with them. And that could take you months or sometimes even years, you know, if you start, you know, maybe that person saved and they gave you the gospel, but, you know, they they take you to some church 
or like the pastor is like a Calvinist and, and, and like you, your, your friend might not even know what Calvinism is. But they think because the pastor sounds smart or whatever, has all these degrees, that he must be going to the right church. And you must be thinking, well, this guy won me to Christ and he's going to this church. Maybe, you know, and he says the pastor has the doctorate in theology or whatever. Maybe this guy's smart and then, you know, you get sucked into Calvinism. You don't know. Not right away. Um, you know, you might not even know what Calvinism is and you might not even know why it's wrong. And that that's why you have to, you know, know basics of the Bible. And you have to go to the source, directly to the source. Because uh, people could take stuff out of context. They might be able to quote you scriptures. But look, even the devil could quote scripture. He just did it out of context. Okay. There's lots of people that are able to quote scripture out of context that will confuse you. Um, if you don't know what the context is. And uh, something else is that a lot of people get, you know, if they start going to church and they're there kind of a while, even when they know they should leave because of, you know, doctrinal issues, it gets harder. Like the longer you're there, the harder it is for you to leave because you're, you get more emotionally invested in the people there. Um. And sometimes you even think that like, you know, you you can change something that the church is that that congregation's like wrong about, and the vast majority of the time you can't, and they'll just think you're crazy, and uh, they're so you know set in their in their ways of, you know, for example, thinking about, you know, the Calvinism stuff or, um, you know, or, 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 you know, thinking that you have to sanctify yourself through works or, or God's going to be mad at you or just weird stuff like that. Or, or if somebody thinks that, you know, that there's a whipping seat at the at the judgment seat of Christ, or that you're going to go to hell for a thousand years if you don't behave, even though you're set, you know, a bunch of garbage like that. Um, it's going to be real hard for you to convince the congregation <laughs> about it, you know. Especially if you're a new believer, like you could even be right if you just read the Bible, right? Um, because you know. Maybe you read the book of Romans cover to cover, you know, your first week you get saved or something, and there might be somebody going to that going to church that has been saved or might not even be saved, but maybe, maybe they're saved and, 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 and they've been going to church. You know, they could be saved. They go to church for 30 years and they never read the book of Romans. Okay, <laughs> you know, they never read Galatians, et cetera, you know. They never read the New Testament. You know, there's people like that. Um, but anyways, please, please, please read your Bible. And I also want to say that, um, you know, in, in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through uh, 21, it talks about the works of the flesh. Okay, and then in verses 22 and 23, you know, contrast that with the fruit of the Spirit. But in verses 19 through 21 in Galatians chapter 5, it talks about the works of the flesh. And, you know, one of the works of the flesh uh, are heresies. Um, and look... There are saved heretics, okay? And the reason we know that is because salvation is not of works and it takes work for you to study the Bible, okay? And 
you know, after you're saved, uh, you're just not all of a sudden just sinlessly perfect. Uh, you still have the flesh. You still have the old man battling the new man, the new creature. But the old creature is also still there. The old man is still there, which is your flesh. And according to the Bible, one of the works of the flesh is heresies. Okay. And, you know, if you're not careful as a Christian, you could fall for heresy. Um, Galatians is a, is a great book for that example, because the, the churches at Galatia were fallen for a bunch of heresy. Okay, and Paul had to rebuke them for it. Um, and, you know, and also... You know, just for the record, you know, when it comes to a false gospel, uh, you know, in Galatians 1, verses 8 and 9, it says, But though we, an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, than that which ye have, we uh, have preached unto you, let him be a curse. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then you have received, let him be accursed, okay? And in that, it doesn't say, well, find out if he's, he or she is saved first. No, it doesn't matter if they're saved. If they're preaching another gospel, let them be accursed, okay? If a man be a heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. Okay, that's, a, you know, uh, Titus 3.10, Um You know, Christians have this thing where if they, th you know, a, a, a lot of Christians, right? A lot of times we have this weakness where if we think somebody's saved, we give them a pass more than if somebody we, we think is not saved. You know, when, when they you know, preach something that, that's heretical. <laughs> and that shouldn't be, okay? Heresy is heresy, it doesn't matter who's preaching it. And if somebody's preaching heresy and they refuse to repent, uh, you know, then they just keep espousing that heresy. Um, you know, don't fellowship with them, Okay. Um, you know, the heresies come up uh, against the truth of the gospel. And uh, so anyways, I hope this edified somebody. I hope somebody has, uh, you know, have a, it's a slightly better, better understanding of, you know, Hey, uh, you know, you need to immediately be on guard against false doctrine. And, you know, even in church settings, there's a bunch of wolves that are either already there or they're going to try to infiltrate and show up or they're going to try to spy out your liberty in Christ and they're going to try to take you from the simplicity that is... That, that are, you know that that you have in Jesus Christ and how simple it is to be saved how that Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures was buried and rose again on the third day for your justification uh, thus granting you in Peter righteousness eternal life and uh, you know uh, in adoption into you know God's family um A, a lot of people want you to think that uh, that what Jesus did wasn't successful, that it wasn't a success, and it, you know they're they're bonkers, and uh, sometimes the bonkers people, um, unfortunately, can sound really convincing to uh, people who are you know not that grounded in the faith.
and uh, you know, some people are deceivers, right? And others are deceived, and you know, sometimes the deceived become the de become deceivers, and even if they might be sincere, you know. You could be sincere all you want. If you're sincerely wrong, you're still wrong. Okay. Um, anyways, signing off.